you know, my father was in a nursing home at the end of his life. Um, and my grandmother was in a nursing home at the end of her life. Um, and they both suffered dementia. And I was, um, you know, I wasn't plotting to, you know, I wasn't like taking notes <laughs> at the time of all this stuff happening. But I think that it sort of um, like stuck inside of my head as something like that would because it's such a, you know, primal experience. And I think it had just been kind of festering in there and kind of unconsciously working on me. It's also like a quilt from all these other sources, like um, one of, a very good friend of mine at one point was reading the script and told me the story, a story that I kind of incorporated into the story of the movie, which is that when his grandmother um, was very old and perhaps at the very end of her life and he was visiting her and he was out of town and he was visiting her and anyway he was going to go out for dinner with friends that evening but he was so she was so unwell that he was scared that she was gonna like pass while he was out at dinner with his friends and he was petrified about it and there was a home health care worker there who said oh don't worry about it you know her toes haven't curled under and he was like, what are you talking about? And, and she said, well, you know, when, when people are going to die, um, their toes curl. Now, I don't know if that's a true scientific fact or if it's just this kind of interesting um, thing that, you know, I don't think a doctor would ever tell you that. But I think that there might be a whole stratum of people who are dealing with human beings, in, 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 you know, towards the end of their life that sort of have a kind of insight into them and a kind of bodily relationship to them because it's this corporeal you know this you know they're changing their bed and t taking care of them in such a like personal way that they would have this kind of very like magical strange beautiful all these you know insight into something that nobody else knows about maybe it's just a weird heightened sensitivity to that or whatever but I guess I kind of see things that way I feel like I often find things I find the humor in things that aren't necessarily obvious. In fact, when things are, t when I'm being forced to perceive something as funny, I, I tend to withdraw from it, and I feel like it's being crammed down my throat, and I'm being force-fed like comedy with a capital C, and it's never. I'm much more attracted to a kind of um, like observational humor that it's you know it's like happening underneath. They're sort of flawed and and and. Um, you know, um, imperfect and very, you know, ill-equipped to handle this crazy thing that's being lobbed into their lap, you know. But, you know, I don't think anybody is actually very equipped to take care of, to know what to do. I don't think the culture, our, the world that we live in prepares us, our world, I mean, maybe in other cultures, but certainly my world does not prepare anyone for like, oh, this is what you do when someone you know is like at the end. I mean, there's no like rule book. Nobody knows what to do. And I think that, and, and it's this uh, scramble. And I think it's a scramble for everybody. So in that way, I think that Wendy and John are like everyone. I think that, um, you know, they might be a little different than everybody else in that they haven't embraced their like adulthood um, fully and that in a way they're, sort of they're very childlike even though they're grown ups and they don't they haven't really like started their own families or their own like lives. They're sort of like in a freeze frame. When they came to my apartment we had very we had like two days or three days of uh like kind of a rehearsal uh period um, which was completely minimal and all we could really handle because of their schedules and stuff. Um, so they came over to my house and had coffee and muffins, and we all sat around and tried to get to know each other a little bit. But um, Laura and Phil, you know, were sitting in my living room in my apartment where I had written the script. And they would, there they were, and I was in the kitchen making them coffee, listening to them and sort of hearing them talk and sort of, like, just the kind of, just the the way that their voices were like trickling into the kitchen. I could just, I was like, this is, they're gonna be, this is, there's gonna be something good that happens with these guys. I could just feel it. And I really feel like, yeah, that it just kind of worked. I was lucky. He's just an astonishing um, 
artist and a he's so meticulous and so um, like nothing goes no rock goes unturned in lots of ways. I mean, he's just really um, thoughtful and more than any actor I've ever seen, not that I'm, you know, Sidney Lumet and have made a million movies with every actor on the planet, but um, he just has this, he has a sort of special, a unique gift, I think, in that, and maybe it's because he also directs theater and, and, and stuff, so he has a kind of... Um, bird's eye view. He's got the microcosm. He's got the like experiential, emotional view, which is all actors do because they have to be present in the moment. And it's this, you know, but then he also has this like, it's like a third eye that's kind of watching everything, you know, what's, you know, what's happening on the outside. He's not just lost inside of his own um, thing. And, but of course he can do that and he can disappear into what he's doing, but he has this kind of peripheral vision about the big picture. John and Wendy are ill-equipped to deal with this. They're selfish sometimes. They're, you know, they're all these different things. They're petty, they're funny, they're warm, they're, but you know, they've got all these different uh, like currents running through them. And I, I personally can identify that with that a lot more than I can this sort of noble, heroic daughter who comes to the aid of their father and doesn't think about themselves. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure maybe those people do exist. I don't know them. Um, but um, I guess I'm interested in um, how hard it is to be a good human being. You know, I don't think it's so easy. And I think that sometimes, um, or just a human being, not even good, just decent, like just an okay person. The filmmaking was um, like very organic feeling that it felt like handmade. Um, and most of the film uh, is held, you know, it's handheld, but it's not in a aggressive kind of like trying to fake thing. Uh, but it's handheld in a way that you know that it feels like it's alive to the rhythms of the uh, of the, the human beings around it. It feels like, uh, to me, that's how I, I was interested in it feeling like handmade. And so, um, so I would, I think it's organic and, um, and, uh, kind of low tech.